In doubt, there's tremendous resistance. In hope, there's less resistance. So in hope, there's more alignment with your inner being than in doubt. In belief, there's more alignment with your inner being than hope because there's less resistance in believing than in hope. In knowing, there is no resistance. There's less resistance in knowing than there is in believing. Because in believing, you're often still fine-tuning and honing and fiddling with it. But when you know something, you just know. When you know, you can feel the evidence of that knowing. Often goosebumps come over you, thrill bumps come, streams of thoughts come, an inspiration to move in the direction of it, which is undeniable and irresistible. And Esther doesn't need to preserve every thought that was ever thought. She's allowed to think new thoughts. That's what religions do. So many religions don't allow you to think new thoughts. You only get to think the old thoughts, even though it doesn't apply to your now society or to your now evolution or to your now expansion. And that doesn't mean that all of that is not available in religion. It certainly is. It's just often not what people who are steeped in religion are about. Because they were right then, the question is, are they still right? It's a wonderful thing, continuity from what was to what is to what will be. It's a lovely continuity as long as it feels good. But when you're standing and you feel protective, then the past isn't serving you. It's a lovely thing. Think of now as a bouncing off place. You're bouncing forward because your inner being is not going to bounce backwards with you. And when you try, it doesn't feel good at all. We have an example for you. Something that happened right before this trip that was really one of those examples is out on the property where the Abraham Hicks Publications is and the house that Jerry and Esther built is and so forth. There is a house that Esther has moved out of and she's moved closer to the airport. <laughs> so the house is being retrofitted in Esther's mind for other important things. It's still in the vortexual state, but it's big and wonderful for her. And around that house are several magnificent, very, very old, hundreds or more year old oak trees. And there's one that sits right in front of the house that Jerry and Esther and their contractor literally built the house around. Garage could have been much bigger if not for that tree. The living room could have been much bigger if not for that tree. The house wraps around that tree, that tree really matters to Esther. So she hired a new guy, really wonderful person, who's accomplishing really a lot. And she got a text from someone else that was on the property. Esther, have you okayed that? And Esther looked, and they were in the process of trimming two very large limbs from that tree. And by the time Esther got out there, they were down. The big limbs were down. And Esther sat in the driveway and wept because, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You would do something that drastic to something that I care so much about with no conversation with me. Now, so don't mourn for Esther. <laughs> she will recover. <laughs> but here's what this is all about. So first of all, Esther doesn't live in that house and look at that tree every day. That's different. Next, one of those branches was completely blocking the entrance to that house. And Esther didn't care because she never came in that entrance. But in the new vision, that entrance is going to matter. Oh. Oh. So Esther's clinging to beliefs that she established with Jerry. Jerry's beliefs matter so much to Esther, even though his beliefs from his non-physical perspective are liberated. So Esther is clinging and defending to a rightness that is no longer active or vivid or necessary and not giving way to what's coming next. But it feels like it should apply because it has been applying. They would be on the road while the house was still in the dream state. They'd come home and Jerry and Mike, the contractor, would stake the house out again. 
the house was drawn to fit in between the trees and then they were trying to figure out if it really would fit so they'd stake it out and they'd put big poles and they'd draw ribbons they were trying to envision the house how many of these trees need to be trimmed or removed in order to get this house in here and it was really a fun process and then Jerry and Esther would go away for a while and they'd come back and the stakes were down and the foundation still hadn't been poured yet and so they'd do it all over again so the planning of that house was so vivid in Esther's mind and the plotting it among those trees that was the strongest vibration from past it was perfect then but what was right then may not be right now because in the evolution of things old gives way to new all the time unless you're clinging to the old and not willing to give way to the new wow she left it by saying to that man now I don't trust you I don't trust you I might come home and find my hanger empty because you think I don't need those things that are in there what was was important and some of what was still is important but much of what was is no longer important but because you were right back there when what was was important you're clinging to being right instead of to what's important and you're forgetting that your vortex knows what's really important because you've been throwing all of this stuff into your vortex not throwing it putting it there delicately and precisely through life experience through the honing of life experience you've created a reality which is where you're going and you can't go forward and backward at the same time and your inner being is never looking back and when you do you're almost always justifying it by I need to be right Jerry was right Jerry was always right Jerry was right and Jerry and I agreed and we were right and you were wrong to do something different than what we agreed upon and we're saying to Esther you got to let what was go and move toward what is more pertinent but it's not an easy thing to do so here's the thing what is is so vivid for all of you that because you can see it in here and smell and taste and touch it so most humans are just sorting what is into piles and calling it right and wrong and arguing with each other and worse about it instead of moving toward what collectively you have discovered would be better for all of you what happened just now in this conversation since none of you were attached to that tree although you felt some sympathy for Esther none of you were attached to that tree and you're not attached to Jerry's wishes the way Esther is attached to Jerry's wishes either and so it would be easier for you to see the improvement than it would for Esther because Esther's not looking for improvement she's looking for rightness Esther's clinging to the past in some ways it's a little bit like looking toward what Jerry used to think instead of looking toward what Jerry is thinking and so the important conversation here is am I allowing my life to help me expand into more or am I clinging to the past in order to justify what is that's a big question and if you're clinging to the past to justify what is then you're no longer creating you're no longer moving forward and you're pretty miserable because your inner being is calling you calling you calling you're not listening to the call yeah the vortex is the vibrational existence of my most forward becoming and my inner being is there not demanding that I come forward just knowing that I'm gonna like it when I get there not judging me for not being there yet patient very patient let's define compassion so that you can feel it fully compassion is accomplishing vibrational at oneness with my inner being and therefore looking at whatever I'm looking at as my inner being sees it it's seeing whatever I'm looking at through the eyes of source sympathy is on the opposite end of the spectrum from compassion for a moment when we told you the tree story for Esther you sympathized with her we never did <laughs> we understood her discomfort and we understood why she had discomfort but we didn't support her in her discomfort instead we looked forward and eventually she'll come along with that because she wants to feel good the tree is irrelevant feeling good is relevant 
So your inner being stands where everything you've asked for is and holds the vibrational frequency of that. Start with the knowledge or the concept of the law of attraction. And imagine yourself for a moment standing in a place of some doubt about something. And imagine your inner being standing in a place of absolute knowing about it. And envision now the law of attraction responding to both of those vibrations. So you've got a mix going on that is hindering in nature because it's like you're pushing and pulling at the same time. You're allowing and denying at the same time. So when you are in complete alignment with your inner being, now there's only one calling. Nothing's pulling against that. And that's why you feel open-ended. That's why you feel free. That's why you feel full and eager and invincible because there's no conflict going on within you. And what we'd like to say here is that the only thing that ever hinders anyone is their own vibrational conflict, which is always evidenced by negative emotion. But even when you are feeling negative emotion, your inner being is not focused upon the fact that you are not in alignment. In fact, if your inner being would focus upon the fact that you are not in alignment, your negative emotion would go away because your inner being would now be sympathizing with you, which it will never do. Follow that? Esther was in quite a situation because she wants to feel good more than anyone you will ever meet and knows how to. And she was sitting there having a knee-jerk reaction to something that she couldn't control. It was over. The limbs were down. It was over. She could not control it. But she didn't let go even though she couldn't control it. She was beating up on herself about not having been in a better position to control it. She was missing the entire point. Because the point isn't to control conditions and situations. The point is to find alignment anyway. That's the point. And that feels a little threatening because a lot of people have been creating their life through a really, we don't want to be disrespectful of you, but a really inadequate ability to control. You cannot control. Well, you can't control much. When you seek to control by pushing against what you don't want, you lose all of your power. So Esther's physical depletion as she blamed it on her loss of the tree it was not about the loss of the tree it was about the loss of her connection period <laughs> so this is good why would you or anyone be defensive somebody was playing offense with you someone was after you about some in other words you felt like you needed to defend yourself against something and so when you feel like you need to defend yourself against something, you're misunderstanding the entire laws of the universe. Because there is no assertion. No matter what it looks like, no one can come at you. It's only in your really important words. It's only your receiving of it. It's only your perceiving of it. And we know you want to take that to literal ends. You want to talk about somebody walking up and punching you in the nose and you didn't see it coming. And we say, that's on you. You didn't see it coming. And the reason you didn't see it coming is because you weren't in alignment with your inner being and so you weren't out ahead of it and so you weren't where the punch wasn't. You were where the punch was. You lined up with that punch in the nose. Abraham, you got to be kidding me. You're making me responsible for that guy punching me in the nose? Yeah. You didn't need to be there. We'll just leave you with that. <laughs> we like to stir you up just a little bit.